Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and I'm very happy to have you with us today. Um, today I'm going to talk about a sewing project and I don't think I've shared anything about sewing on um, the YouTube channel before. Um, that's because I don't really sew very much. It's something that I admire and um, have always wanted to do more of. I did have a short stint of sewing my own clothes um, back in college. Um, but that didn't really stick with me, and I'll, I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, so the sewing project I'm going to talk about is an outfit that I made for a Burns supper um, that we intended last night. And uh, I wanted to kind of explain what that is in case you're not familiar. So Robert Burns is um, kind of the national poet of Scotland. And every year around his birthday, which is January 25th, um, Burns suppers are held um, primarily probably in Scotland and the rest of the UK but also around the world to celebrate his life and his works and I'm just going to read you a little paragraph from the Robert Burns um, website so it says the annual celebratory tribute to the life works and spirit of the great Scottish poet Robert Burns 1759 to 1796 celebrated on or about the Bard's birthday January 25th, Burns suppers range from stentoriously formal gatherings of aesthetes and scholars to uproariously informal rave-ups of drunkards and louts. Most Burns suppers fall in the middle of this range and adhere more or less to some sort of time-honored form, which includes the eating of traditional Scottish meal, drinking of Scotch whiskey, and recitation of works by, about, and in the spirit of the bard. Um, so our friend Scott Russell, who's been on the, um, the YouTube channel before, the Homebrew Guru, uh, hosts this burn Supper. And we realized it was the seventh year that we had been um, doing that annually with, with uh, Scott and his wife Eve. And it was high time that I made an outfit. Um, I had talked about in the past either buying a sash or a bit of tartan. Um, you know, a patch or something to put onto another item. Um, but this year I decided I was going to sit down and actually make myself a skirt and a matching sash to go with it um, to wear to Burns Night. Um, we had a great time, and I will just say um, before I talk about the actual sewing um, that I think it, it, it sounds maybe a little strange to celebrate. Um, someone who lived over 200 years ago but if you look at Robert Burns's poetry and he's best known for Auld Lang Syne the song that uh, many people sing at New Year's um, my love is like a red red rose um, you, you may know his work without realizing that that's him um, but you know he was also very political um, he's quite progressive for his era um, he was a great lover of women and quite a ladies' man and wrote some beautiful love poetry. Um, so I think you can look back and say, okay, this guy that was, you know, mid-1700s, what does he have to say? Um, and he still has a lot to say. And I think that's the fun thing about A Burn Supper is that you can take um, those poems and really apply them to today's political situation or social situation or perhaps to something you know more personal that happened in your own life. Um, so I will le uh, link to his complete works. They are available online, and I encourage you to take a gander and look through them. Um, the other great thing about Robert Burns is that he really celebrated the Scottish dialect, Scots, and um, this was in a time when it was not popular to speak in this way. It was thought improper, and um, there were schools, I believe, around the UK that were um, or educators that were trying to go to Scotland and to get them to speak properly, um, which is to say like the English were speaking. So you know, Robert Burns is also celebrated in Scotland for um, helping to take the Scottish uh, way of speaking, the Scottish dialect, and put it into poetry and to popular song and really celebrate it. And you know its unique flavor and its unique um, turns of phrase and vocabulary to describe the things that Robert Burns was talking about. Um, so that's, that's another fun uh, facet of celebrating his work. Um, so like I said, we had been celebrating um, 
uh, Burns Night Supper with our friend Scott and me for several years and I had been thinking about making something to wear. Um, my, I do have some Scottish ancestry myself in my family and um, had always wanted a bit of tartan or something to wear on special occasions. So um, I decided this was the year. Um, there is an importer of Scottish fabric in New Hampshire, and I was able to purchase authentic. This is real. Um, it's 100% wool woven in Scotland in the traditional colors. And um, so that was, you know, I think worthwhile. I would not have felt as good about investing my own time in a sewing project um, if I didn't have good materials to start with. So I was, I was glad to be able to pick up some yardage. And this particular tartan... Uh, pattern is Macmillan, is the family, and um, this is called the Ancient Hunting um, Pattern. So um, many, many families have several different tartans that have been, you know, uh, adapted or adopted over the years, and they can be quite varied in their appearance. Um, in the, the couple of the Macmillan tartans that I've seen, the patterns um, just aren't my colors. They don't go with anything else that I have in my wardrobe. It would be difficult for me to justify making an entire outfit out of something that I didn't really think was flattering on me. Um, so I was glad to find this one because it has a lot of blue and green and those are the colors I tend to wear a lot of. Um, now I was gonna mention about sewing and why I don't sew as much. Um, and it, you know, it's a hard one and I hope I don't offend any sewists out there. Um, there are a lot of people that I've met online or admired the work of people who are incredibly talented with sewing and um, I really do admire the skill and the attention to detail that sewing requires and it's very different to me from knitting. Um, yes, knitting is detail-oriented and that you're making each stitch one by one. Um, I think the hardest part for me was sewing is that the actual time that you're using needle and thread to, to bind fabric together is very small in proportion to all the other steps that go into making a garment or making a quilt, um, anything with multiple parts that's kind of complicated. Um, you have to spend a lot of time doing things like measuring and being sure you're cutting your cloth out the right way, um, pinning pieces together, ironing stuff. Um, the actual sewing part is a very small fraction of all that time and investment, and I think it's all those other steps that I just don't enjoy very much. I, I um, am not the most coordinated person in the world. I often end up stabbing myself with pins or the seam ripper, which is like probably the tool I use the most because I make a lot of mistakes when I'm sewing, um, burning myself on the iron, scorching my fabric, cutting things out the wrong way. <laughs> it's just maybe if I was doing more sewing and had a better skill set and sort of knew what I was doing more, it would be more enjoyable. Um, I'm hoping to put that theory to the test, that if I can build up my skills, that it will become less arduous and more fun to do. Um, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm just going to you know, keep going with this. Um, it may not ever become my most favorite hobby or the thing I spend the most time doing, but I think having basic sewing skills is one of those things that everyone should really try to develop at least a little bit. You know, if you can hem a pair of pants or sew on a button, replace a zipper, um, that's gonna help you make your wardrobe last that much longer. And there's so much talk now about fast fashion and the, the wastefulness that goes into the textile and the clothing stream in particular. Um, so I think it's a good, you know, just skill to have, just like being able to make yourself a meal with fresh ingredients. Um, but it, it is also something that I would like to get better at and be able to customize patterns to fit me better or, um, you know, being able to pick out the right kind of fabric for a type of garment that I want to you know, draped the right way or, or whatever it is. So I'm looking forward to that. Again, even if it never becomes my most favorite hobby, um, I think it's a great thing to develop. So um, with all that said, I'm going to link to some of the tutorials that I used to refresh my memory or teach myself new sewing skills. Um, I did not work from a pattern, which as a beginning sewist is 
pretty scary, but I didn't have a lot of choice. I was under a tight deadline. I, I decided to make the skirt and it was the beginning of January. So I had to get my fabric and then immediately start working on this outfit, which is a, a skirt and a sash, I should say. Um, I'm wearing my sash right now as a stole. It's pretty wide, so you can wrap it around your shoulders like this. Um, or last night I was wearing it across my body, uh, more like Miss America style. Um, that, that whole process took probably the best part of three days. Um, and so I just knew that I didn't have a lot of option when it came to trying to find the right kind of a pattern, order the pattern, get the pattern, all of that. Um, so what I did was I actually used a skirt that, that I like the fit of on me, and I used that as a template. I, I, I pinned the skirt onto my fabric, and I cut around, leaving myself a pretty generous seam allowance, and was able to make a very basic skirt, um, which is just a front panel, a back panel, a couple of darts, um, a zipper on one side and a waistband. Um, and I, I was telling Rick that I didn't even want to have to hem the bottom of the skirt, so I used the selvage edge at the bottom because it was a nice looking selvage, um, and that worked out pretty well. Um, so I, you know, I don't have a lot of tips for you in terms of sewing, but again, I will link to all the tutorials that I use that help me, and um, that's you know, been another great thing in, in the time since I was sewing when I was in college up till now. Um, of course, YouTube has become a thing and you can learn almost any skill in any kind of craft that you need at the point that you need it. I find that I don't do so well with um, workshops or things like that because if you go to a class or even if you buy a class online, you probably don't need half or to 75% of those skills um, necessarily all at once. But if you can find a video that will teach you how to put in a zipper or uh, how to add a dart, then you can just look at that one skill and add to your repertoire of uh, your toolbox of skills in that way. I do the same thing with knitting. Um, I've never actually taken a, a knitting class. I've, I've had a little bit of one-on-one -on -one instruction with friends. Um, my mother actually taught me how to knit. She taught me the very basics. And then if I find a pattern or if I see something or I'm working on a design and I need to figure something out, I just go to YouTube and look it up. And that's been really great. One other thing I'll mention about this sewing project in particular is that plaid is kind of a double-edged sword in terms of a type of pattern to work with. Um, it has lots of different straight lines and it's almost its own gridded, um, it, it has like a built-in grid that you can follow. So when you're cutting out fabric or pinning things together, you can really see if stuff is lining up, if you're cutting straight, um, and it, that's very handy. And a busy plaid like this with so many different colors it gives you a lot of options. When I was doing my seams to try to get the skirt to fit, or when I was pulling in the darts um, for some waist shaping, you know, I could decide, okay, is it going to be from the black to the yellow, or from the black to the black, or is it going to be from the red stripe to this other red stripe? You know, you had a lot of gradation in there to really tweak the fit and to um, decide the overall shape of the garment. The downside to working with a plaid or a busy, any kind of busy striped fabric is that you can really see um, any kind of an error if you make one. So if you, if you look really closely at my seams, some of them are not perfectly straight and you can really see it, um, but you have to get right up to the fabric to see that. So, you know, that doesn't really bother me. Um, I know I'm a beginning sewist and my skills just are not where they're going to be in, you know, if I keep doing this and working on more projects, I know I can get better. Um, and that's okay. But, you know, it was interesting working with plaid because I was nervous. This fabric was expensive and I didn't want to mess it up or ruin something or waste money. And at the same time, it was a great motivator to really finish the project and be able to wear it because you don't want to spend money on expensive fabric and then just have it sitting in the bottom of your closet. Right? So um, those are kind of my two tips. One is about working with any kind of a pattern. Um, 
especially a pattern with a lot of straight lines, that can be useful if you're a beginner. And then the other is just to really invest in quality materials, buy the best that you can afford, because to me, and it's just like with knitting too, if you have really nice materials, it's that enticement to dive in, to get over any fear um, that you have going into a project, um, to invest the time and learn whatever skills you need, and to be really proud of the finished object when you're all done with it. I hope you've enjoyed this little um, look into my sewing world. If you have any tips for a beginner in terms of you know particular YouTube channels to follow, um, or maybe next projects. I'm going to try to do a summer dress. Um, and I do have a pattern for it. I don't know if I 100% like the pattern. So uh, if you have any other tips for me, I'd love your advice, um, especially all you experienced sewers. And um, yeah, if you're, if you're making anything, whether it's sewing, whether it's a, a new knitting skill or something like that, that you're challenging yourself to take on in 2019, I would love to hear about that too. So leave your comments down below. Thanks again for joining me and tune in next week. We'll see you then.